Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. Today, I would like to ask the question, are distractions always bad? Michael, kick us off. Well, thanks, Robin. I, don't, I think that it, it, they can be good and they can be bad. A lot of what I do in my leadership coaching practice is helping folks be better listeners. And you can't be a really good, solid listener. And as a result, a great leader for your team, if you're letting those everyday distractions get in the way. We all know how the, our mobile devices or even the ding of an email can take us off of the task at hand or from listening. So yes, they can be very bad if you let them. But I know for me personally, there are times where distractions are good. So if I'm really intently trying to solve a problem or even deep into creating a new workshop and I'm really into it, sometimes it's good for me to be distracted and to step away mm -hmm. and then to come back with those fresh eyes and see, see it from a new perspective. And you know what? Sometimes the distraction that I look for is something that allows me to observe someone else's creativity or someone else's work because a lot of times that gives me some inspiration for when I get back to mine. Hmm. Um, I, it kind of took me to the same place, Michael, when I thought of distractions for me, I thought as a leader, um, a lot of what I do is managing distraction, you know, and a lot of the work that I do with some of our customers, when we set goals for their talent acquisition strategies, you know, and we're not seeing the needle move is in what I hear is, well, I have to put out fires. And these fires are these distractions, you know. So for me, distraction, I immediately went to um, an interruption. I'm being interrupted. Something's taking me away from something I'm trying to do now or even maybe a long-term goal. Yeah, that was so true. In I, I spent a lot of time running a, a branding and marketing agency, and we would see that with clients all the time, similar to how you are with a talent strategy is clients would think that something's not working and they'd want to go then go move to something else and take their eye off the ball. And sometimes you really need to be in it for the long haul. I'm sorry, Abby, did I interrupt you? Oh, no, that's all, that's all right. Um, Michael, I was thinking similarly to how you were, and oftentimes that distraction gives you fresh eyes. And what I often do is as a punishment for the distractor, if it's work related, I say, you know what, you know, after addressing whatever that thing is, you know, can you take a look at this with me? So not only do I have fresh eyes, but I have another set of eyes and that's sort of their, their penance for uh, interrupting me if I have headphones on and I'm clearly focused in the zone. And that's always been helpful because it brings up sometimes a question you didn't see, just, a, a, you know, another mindset looking at it. Mm -hmm. So are we using distractions as anything that interrupts us and maybe not negatively, although the word tends to be used pretty negatively, generally speaking? I think we're in a dis uh, uh, an increasingly distracting world. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I used to be able to read on a, my tablet, on my, I, uh, on my iPad using a reading app, and I find that I can't do that. There's too much potential distraction with an email or now with a text coming through and all of that. So mm -hmm. I prefer like an e-reader for that. So I think that the, the, the increasingly distracted world is a part of that. But also, uh, you don't want to forget that sometimes distractions take you away from something that's hurting you or that's unpleasant. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I know that there have been times in my life going through something difficult you know, watching my favorite movie as a distraction or watching something that always brings a smile to my face was a healthy distraction for me to get through those that, that specific issue or that time. But I think the line there is, is when are you leaning on it as a, as a crutch or an avoidance of something you need to get past or get mm -hmm. through? In the last year working at home, I found that because I didn't have much of a line between work and family. Sometimes spending time with your family makes you realize the work thing was not nearly as monumental as you thought it was because mm -hmm. something else, it's a distraction, but something else comes up to really put your whole worldview into perspective of all the things you have to do, not just work. So that's where it can be, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it kind of helps you reset to think this thing is not the end all be all. It, you know, you will get past this project and let's take some time to, to focus on something else. You know, one thing you said earlier, Michael, of um, which I, I'd like to get back to is as a leader, again, the distractions, we, we're not in the present moment, mm. you know, so we're not actively listening. 
And that stands really true for me with distractions. Again, as you said, with the increasing amount of distractions around us. So there's things that we can do, obviously, to have a certain level of control, like just getting ready for this call. I close my window, shut my phone, put my email. You know, there's certain things we can control and others we just simply cannot. But I think it, 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 it is an explanation of why mindfulness has come, you know, has become really important in how to be in that present moment. We all have the opportunity, we all have the responsibility to show up well for each other. And that's where, especially when you're leading, whether you're leading at the top of a, of a team and you are the, the designated leader or whether you're leading in your own way, just in the small, a small group interaction you're having or in your family when you're leading or setting an example, we just have to remind ourselves to show up for the other person and part of that is just limiting the distractions that we can control. I do a listening workshop, and that's one of the things that I really get back to over and over again is you have control over a lot of them. Some of them you don't, and you have to listen around those. But most often, the distractions that do the most damage are the ones that we can control. That includes our devices, but that also includes the tendency that we all have as human beings to start formulating a response before someone's finished. Mm -hmm. The distraction yeah. sometimes is up here. And I'm wondering, can you be distracted to rather than distracted from? So we're talking a lot about if you're talking to someone and your device distracts you or whatever, but what if you're working on something and a human needs you? Is that a distraction too and an opportunity to engage with a human being? when you're in a, a leadership role and Bridget you alluded to this that is your responsibility sometimes because you have people coming to you and I work at a small company and I know when I talk to mentors there sometimes they do have that immediate need and I think part of the role as a leader is knowing that you're going to have to manage some of your time that way because if you're you're continuing to build a team and want to help people grow there might be times when they have that immediate need so it's it's a tough balance but I think they you know like you just said, Robin, with all of the, the technology and everything to interact with another person, probably going to help in the long run. Mm -hmm. But I also, think... I mean, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Richard. When that person comes, you know, does it need to be addressed immediately? Mm -hmm. Right. There's also that that we need to consider. So going back to how do, how do we overcome that? You, you, you raised it, I think, Abby, is, is time management. Right. We have to manage our time. We have so much time to allocate. And so so how do you do that is by knowing what your goals are and what your priorities are, you know, and, and then when that thing comes up, it's like, OK, is this does this need my attention now? So that distraction doesn't take you fully away. Yeah, it's still, you know, stopped you from what you were doing. But how do you manage that distraction? You know, Managing the ambush conversations. Ambush conversations are huge. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're an, as a leader, if you're just an answer factory for your people, they're not growing. Right. Yeah. One day I have a, a colleague who says that if you're talking to someone or listening to someone and your tongue is against the roof of your mouth, you're actually thinking about what you want to say. And if you drop your tongue into the bottom of your mouth, it makes you think more about what they're saying. I find for me, it makes me think about my tongue. So I don't know if that's necessarily helpful. <laughs> we're, we're all doing it right now. Right yeah, now. I was trying it. <laughs> my tongue was, was at the top of the, you know, so yeah. I was thinking yeah. right now. Yeah. So interesting. Is, you know, man, managing that, managing. And I know when you are engaging with someone, we, I've had conversations here on Quick Hits about how much silence is allowed. And especially in American culture, there's not a lot of room for silence. So you better be ready with what you're going to say. And not very many people can listen and remember, like, I got to remember to say this thing. So I think that that creates a challenge when it comes to distractions and listening and paying attention to people as well. Mm -hmm. I hope one silver lining out of this pandemic and doing so many meetings on Zoom and having to suffer through that awkward silence has taught folks that pausing to think is okay mm -hmm. and to allow others you know we some of us uh you know some of us think very quickly and are good on our feet other f folks need that time to really absorb and formulate and a lot of times that's what happens especially to my fellow introverted friends sometimes is they get steamrolled by the people who are able to be quick mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean what they have to say is any less important as a matter of fact sometimes it's even more profound 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, that is our 10 minutes. So I'm going to cut us off there for our conversation about distractions. Thank you so much for having with me. And I look forward to talking to you all again very soon.